I'm Model Muppet and I have dementia. <laughs> Hi guys, how you doing? Seriously, it has been a long-standing concern of mine. I don't actually have dementia. I certainly have, don't have diagnosed dementia. But, I mean, I chose the name Muddled Muppet a long time ago because of the way that I always get mixed up about stuff and sort of confused. <laughs> and my memory is always terrible. Uh, I, I, I've kind of always been like that. I, I suppose... in. In some ways, when I was younger, it was my ambition in life to become one of these uh, scatty professors. <laughs> and I, I didn't manage to make the professor bit, but I did manage to get the scatterbrain bit. So, 50% success there. <laughs> now, um, I was pointed to some research today by a guy called Ali Wagner on Google+. Plus. So, thanks for that. Um, as just a little bit of useless information, I used to live in Richard Wagnerstrasse in Mönchengladbach when I was a kid. I can remember that very, very clearly. Yet yeah, there's things that happened yesterday and I can't remember very clearly. And memory is a funny thing like that. And certainly the older you get, the more likely you're going to retain long-term memories and lose short-term memories. It's, it's just part of the aging process, things that affect your brain. But this research was about how playing games has a positive effect on the brain. And I've got to say, to me, this concept isn't new because because of my previous work, uh, I used to have to study the brain. Not you know, I'm not no neuropsychologist or anything, but I did have to study the brain quite a bit and get a reasonable understanding of it. And there's a very simple concept in how the brain works. Uh, I want you to imagine that there's a field near where you live, and this field is overgrown to the extent it's practically like a jungle. And over a long period of time, several people walk over that field along the same path. And eventually there will be a path worn. And as the path gets worn, anyone crossing that field is likely to cross that path and use that path. And it kind of has a snowball effect until after a period of time, you'll eventually have a very clear path through the jungle. Now, the way that neural networks work within the brain is very, very similar in that the more often a neural network is used, the stronger it becomes and the easier it is for neurons to access that path and use it. And this is basically why when you practice anything, the more you practice it, the easier it becomes. It doesn't matter what it is. For example, I'm very good at masturbation. <laughs> Sorry, I really shouldn't have brought the, the tone of this down so quickly, but there you go. It, it came into my brain <laughs> and, and so it's been used. Um, now, the, the areas that games affect within the brain are areas to do with spatial awareness. I mean, like even playing this game now, you ha I am developing spatial awareness skills because of the three-dimensional aspect of the game. A lot of games require problem-solving skills. And the more you use problem-solving skills, the stronger those become for any problem. It doesn't have to be the same problem. Do you, you kind of get what I'm saying? Now... I'd say pretty much ever since games came out, there's been a fear amongst parents that playing games is bad for kids. Now, I will say that if, if anyone does anything to the exclusion of everything else, then it is bad. Hang on a sec. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. I just found it funny being behind that guy and killing him. Uh, yeah, if you do anything to the exclusion of anything else, it's bad for you. So somebody who reads books non-stop and never gets out... That's bad for you. Somebody who just concentrates on their physical prowess and performance and doesn't do anything to sort of educate their mind or, you know, think about their, for want of a better term, spirituality or emotional growth. That is bad for you. Um, sex is fantastic, but if somebody lives their life to the, the you know, with purely based around sex to the exclusion of everything else, that would actually be bad for you. Which explains why the years between 10 and 40 were so bad for me. I brought it down again, and I, I wanted this to actually be a rational, uh, meaningful kind of discussion. <laughs> um, so what else can games do that are good for you? I'm gonna, by the way, I'll, before I forget to mention this, I will put a link in the description to that piece of research. I, I, I find the brain fascinating. I really do. Uh, I can recommend a very good book for anyone who wants to kind of get a handle on it but doesn't want to go sort of you know too deep into it 
And it was written by a, a Harvard neuropsychologist, and it's called A User's Guide to the Brain. And it is a fantastic book, you know, it, it is just so interesting, purely for interest, you know, alone. You'd like to say you don't need to be some sort of professional in the field to get some uh, interest out of the book. Hold on, let's have a little slurp of me coffee and a little smoke here. <laughs> Actually, that was quite a good little break because it's it's expanded a, a train of thought for myself. Sometimes, if I talk too much and don't take a break, I, I I lose track of developing ideas. And one of the ideas I want to develop is the more often you repeat a pattern of anything, you you are in effect practicing it and become better better at it. And and this happens to anything, anything you know, from cooking to bricklaying, you you name it. The more often you do something, the better you will get at it. Now, what I'd like to examine for a minute is social interaction on multiplayer gaming. Now, there's various different ways of doing this. You go into, into a game lobby and you're up against people you've never met before. And, you know, a few people have got microphones on and you might say something like, Hi guys, you know, um, what, what's up? How's it going? Some, you know, something sort of a bit social, a bit lighthearted, a bit friendly. Or you might say... I'm gonna fucking rape you guys. You know what I mean? You might just come across like being a total dick. And some people do that like intensely. You know, they, they do it all the time. Now, what I would suggest is, in effect, they are practicing at being a dick. And this would become easier for them and more natural to them. In real life, as well as away from the keyboard. Now, these, these sort of things are very, very subtle. And they, they may not notice it. But the people around them will. They'll be, they'll be like that when they're in conversation with work colleagues, uh, in conversation with their partners. Do, do you know what I mean? The more often somebody is a dick, the more likely they are to be a dick in the future. I'm, I'm kind of free-flowing free with my thoughts here, but what do you think of that as a concept? You know, if, you, if you're nice to people in games, it will actually help you in forming relationships in real life. Because you become practiced at just having a casual conversation with somebody and getting to know somebody. You become practiced at it, you become better at it. I've met some fantastic people through playing online. Didn't know them before. We end up having a, having a talk in a lobby or something. And, you know, it, it's really good. It's, and, it's, and it's fun and it's enjoyable. And I've met some guys who are just plain dicks. There's, there's no other word for it. Uh, but a long time ago now, I, I got accused of being a racist by some guys and it was actually about a comment that I didn't make because I'd muted these people because they were being dicks. And in this game, if I mute somebody, it automatically mutes me as well so they don't hear what I'm saying. But they couldn't tell apart one British sounding accent from another and somebody had made a comment that they took as being racist, which I don't actually think the comment was. And but they they thought it was me right so the reason i mention this is just this week i bumped into one of these guys in the lobby and it, and again he started with this and I, I tried to say look you know it wasn't me who made the comment in the first place but this guy was just shouting over the top of me Const you know constantly just shouting over the fucking top of me and conversation was impossible so i just muted him and yeah i left the lobby i can't be asked with people like that now the, the point i'm trying to make here is that kind of behavior became very easy for him and the more he does that the easier it will become the more the more natural it will become it will, it will become second nature for him to just constantly talk over the top of other people does that make sense and if somebody holds a different opinion opinion from you and you give them a chance to actually explain their opinion and listen to it first of all they might actually change your mind about something and you know you you hold less entrenched opinions but it also becomes easier then to communicate with people who you disagree with. Does that make sense? I, I think it does. In, in, my, <laughs> in my teaching days, that was one thing I used to say all the time. Uh, does that make sense? To, to the point where it was <laughs> a cliche. <laughs> um, so yeah, a, a bit of a rambling commentary. Um, I, I'm turning into, <laughs> you know, um, Bart Simpson's granddad. You know the granddad in The Simpsons where he just rambles on sometimes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that's kind of who I'm turning into. When I first started doing this, I was going to 
I, I had it in my mind that I was going to be doing a, a quite a sort of intellectual and in-depth discussion on the brain itself, but th this isn't the right place for that. Uh, you know, if you want to learn about the hippocampus or uh, etc., there's better places to get it than Mud and Muppets Gaming Channel. Anyway, we've come to the end of the video, so p bit of a rambling commentary, but put your thoughts down for me, guys. Um, Maybe, maybe playing video games will stave off dementia for me, and maybe it might for you. Take it easy. Ciao.